every culture, language or nation has its magical foods. The most mysterious are the natural and unprocessed urban organic products. We'll call them health food. Is that so? We will try to find out next. So ring the bell and subscribe for the eyes. We are starting right now. Every culture, language or nation has its magical foods. For example, chicken soup of Jewish grandmothers. It is a food that may produce a miracle for those who are desperate from capsules of powder and scraps purchased at pharmacies. When you have the flu, it is not antibiotics that will land the winning blow on the rootless bacteria, but the chicken soup, the soup known as Jewish antibiotics. And finally, all these great veggies that are sitting in here, I have a carrot, is good for a great, great source of vitamins and minerals. So. The shiny chicken fat, the carrots and parsley will give the flu what it deserves. Of course, it's a placebo drug that makes the patients feel better because they expect themselves to feel so after taking. This drug also improves the mood of those who made it. There are countless foods of this type in all countries and nations. But the most magical, the most mysterious, are the natural and unprocessed urban organic products. We'll call them health food. With visit in those products shelves, we are shown a host of wonderful foods, every one of which guarantees in its own way quality and longevity. The root of ginseng, according to various scientific publications and writings, improves body energy, immune levels, and reduces the chance of getting cancer and heart disease. Chia seeds fight free radicals toxins and also reduce the chance of heart disease and cancer. Linen improves the digestive and cleanses the digestive system and even reduces the chance of getting cancer and heart diseases. Shiitake mushrooms fight cancer and anemia and of course, it is worth mentioning spirulina, which is also wonderful and reduces the chance of getting a heartbeat. It is not a coincidence that the foods sound the same. In fact, they are all a variation on elixir, the long-awaited fruit that grows on the tree of life in the garden of heaven. Mankind has not stopped looking for this fruit, whose composition is unknown and eternal life are guaranteed to those who eat it. Health food products are soaked in our fears and anxieties, and we spend fortune drinking them periodically, chew them accurately, and believe the probiotic bacteria that has been evolved from an animal to a product should hold a formula that will save our bodies. If there are foods that give eternal life, then there are also bad ones. And everyone who reads health food journalism can be caught up in the apocalyptic terms that were taken from the Hollywood movie subtitles. This is the doomsday war on the bodies of innocent consumers. On the one hand, the evil forces and the cheeseburger from which bacon thong breaks out, sprinkling on us a Coca-Cola black liquid from hell. And on the other side are the celery and the legume rich, sprouts rich in copper, magnesium and determination. I do not doubt scientific research. But keep in mind that in these researches, often the food gets spell properties that do not really exist. 
The division between good foods and bad foods is not just a metaphorical division between light and the forces of darkness, but also a sociological separation which crosses Western societies into two groups. On the one hand, the healthy food group that makes sure to eat healthy, sustainable, low-fat and vegan food, and on the other, the promiscuous gang of fat and sugar criminals. And hence, the people who eat healthy food, like quinoa and kale, they are better people, because by eating this kind of food, they are protecting the earth from ecological damage, support local agriculture, protecting the animals, and of course, their lives and bodies are taken seriously and responsibly. In contrast, those who eat hamburger and nachos, they are bad people, who supports the food industry that exploits its employees, polluting the earth and becoming a burden on the health system and their environment. Of course, physical health is directly linked to mental health, so people who eat healthy are responsible, decent and smart, who can reject gratification and control their appetites and emotions. People who eat burrito, on the other hand, are mentally ill, with addictions to cheap thrills, and their mind split and confused. How else can you explain why they eat foods that weaken their bodies, distort their figure, and damage the environment? The distinction between healthy and unhealthy food, between good and sane people and morality-free scums, established on economic class distinction. The healthy people are people who have money in their pocket, so they can afford to pay more for organic rice and vegetables, spend more time cooking at home and keeping a balanced diet and the vice versa. Healthy eating informs the environment, leisure and character, home and security. Eating healthy as a moral position produced by the middle class, by which the food crosses a cultural and psychological boundary between them and those who earn less and work more. To justify the moral purity that is actually an economic prosperity, Health eaters are becoming the link between wealth and health. In their version, unhealthy eating is not the result of financial difficulties, poor living conditions and social oppression. It is a result of ignorance, frustration and distorted priorities. If only to explain to people who eat unhealthy, that the cheap and industrial food they swallow carries a high price, they will change their ways, they will stop spending money on the burger and buy organic vegetables, they will cancel the cable TV subscription and stop pizza deliveries for the benefit of cooking organic full rice and garden vegetables at home. This concept adopts two false conceptions of the capitalist system. The poor has no reasonable sense and are therefore poor in their guilt. That is, if they will eat a salad and stop smoking, they will be rich. Number two, the poor are lazy, so they are poor in their own guilt. The conclusion seems clear. The financiers and the masters of health are not to blame. Neither in sick or poverty, the poor and unhealthy are the ones who let cable companies, tobacco companies and food corporations to take advantage of them. Health eaters are unwilling to acknowledge the fact that they belong to the exploitatives. More than that, they refuse to acknowledge the fact that they can live well and eat healthy food 
it is the result of the impossibility of many others to eat healthier and live well. And to obscure the relationship between healthy eating and economic gaps, we get the rhetorical argument which portrays healthy eating as political social activism. Purchase of organic vegetables for home cooking and consumption reduction of industrial products are presented as a resistance to the food industry, protecting human rights and saving the earth. Eating healthy stops being an egoistic act or part of the culture of cultivation and pleasure and becomes a philanthropy and a charity. Healthy eating denies being an expression of consumer culture, a culture that is responsible for the gap between the rich and the poor, between slightly healthy and many unhealthy, and tries to present itself as a right form of existence inside the capitalist monster that has created by itself. And that is the reason I remind you again to subscribe this channel and to comment to this video. Thanks for watching, see you on the next!